Support for The Gaming Outsider is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code THEGOCAST at manscaped.com. Welcome, Game and Outsiders. On episode 367, CB, Alyssa, and I talk about mechanics in video games that simply don't make any sense when it comes to science. In news, there's an awesome trailer for the latest Resident Evil movie and a new special edition controller to celebrate 20 years of Xbox. Finally, you hear our thoughts on two huge releases this past week, Far Cry 6 and Metroid Dread. Spoiler alert, they're both great. Oh, and CB checked out the Alan Wake remaster. This is The Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs, and welcome to episode 367 of The Gaming Outsider, a video game podcast with a focus on our incredible community. It's Monday, October 11th. I'm your host, Scott Clark, and joining me are my friends, Chris Behrensmeyer. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going, Scott? I'm doing all right. And also joining us, it's been a few weeks, Miss Alyssa White. Alyssa, how are you? I've been okay, but I've missed you guys so much. I have missed you, Alyssa. Very excited to have you on the show. It is so good to have you back. Uh, Zach has taken the week off, so and I think this might be the first time the three of us have done a regular episode. Is, am I mistaken? I think uh, so. I believe that's correct. So this is going to be fun. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens here. This is going to be a good, good time. We got so many good games to talk about. Uh, the fall season is definitely upon us. Um, we, we've got a, t- a ton of games to talk about. Oh, okay, three games to talk about, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump into it. Before we get into the actual games, though, I want to give a uh, shout out to our giveaway winners. We gave away three games this week uh, because we kind of dropped the ball on August and September. So we decided to catch up and uh, go ahead and give away three games for the month of October. So congrats to Devin Price, who won a copy of Deathloop on PlayStation 5. Jeremy Coy for winning a copy of Hot Wheels Unleashed on Xbox Series X and John Mendiola for winning a copy of Metroid Dread on Nintendo Switch. Uh, you guys will be getting your copies sometime later this week. I've got the copy of Deathloop, CB has the copy of Hot Wheels, and I've got the copy of Metroid Dread, which I'm still in the process of finishing up, but I'm very, very close to finishing it. Also, we're going to be doing our giveaway for November a little bit early. So uh, stay tuned to social media for the giveaway. We are giving away a copy of Far Cry 6 on PlayStation Ooh. 5, but yeah, I see you get pretty excited there, Alyssa, but it's not just the cop- just a regular old copy of Far Cry 6. It is the gold edition steelbook of Far Cry 6 on PlayStation 5, which includes the season pass, which I don't even have. I don't even have the season pass uh, yet. That's a big yet. I am already jealous of the future winner. Yeah, I am a little bit too. I, I could have kept it for myself, but no, we're going to give it away to the community. So stay tuned. I'm going to be posting on social media after this episode airs so that you can win a copy. Uh, you may want to pay close attention to this episode because uh, you may need some information from this episode in order to be eligible to win. But I want to hear about the games that you guys have been catching up on. Alyssa, it looks like you got a chance to play Kina Bridge of Spirits. I'm really glad that uh, Zach isn't here. <laughs> <laughs> because he's going he'd be really mad. He wants to play this game so badly, but how are you digging it? I am liking it a lot so far. I've only gotten about a couple of hours in, so I'm not too deep into it. Mm-hmm. And actually Zach did message me and ask me cuz he caught me playing it one day. Oh, did he? <laughs> did... <laughs> but on... um cuz you guys are friends on PlayStation? Yeah. Okay. So shout out to Zach. <laughs> <laughs> how mad was he? How jealous was he? I, I couldn't really tell because it was a text message, but he just asked me how I liked it. Yeah. And he's like, does it seem like a PS2 game, which I don't think it does. Yeah. Uh, it seems more like a Zelda type game to me, personally. Right. But it's just, it's so adorable. It looks like a Pixar movie. And you're playing as Kana, and she's just cute as can be. Oh, did I mispronounce it? It's Kana, not Kina? Yeah, it's Kana. It looks like it's Kina or Kenna, but... In the game, they do pronounce her name as Kana. Hooked on Phonics apparently didn't work for me. Nope, not at all. But, like, there are these little adorable creatures called rots that follow you around and they can help you in the environment, and you could put hats on them. The hats have no purpose besides making them look cuter. 
All so right. I love this game already so much. The combat's not anything complex or anything. The boss battles do get a little bit difficult, even on normal difficulty. But it's just, it's a blast. It's beautiful. It's unique. And I just, I love the characters. And I can't wait to dive more into the game and experience more things. It's Very just cool. it's gorgeous. Well, we will catch up with you on that more next week as you dive deeper into that one for sure. Um, it's going to be on a back burner for me just because of my uh, ever-increasing backlog, but it is one that caught my attention. And I, I have to imagine that Zach will be playing it at some point too. So, CB, what about you? Anything you've been catching up on this week? Um, well, I outside of the two new games that we're going to be talking about here in a bit, I did some achievement chasing today. Yeah. Oh, you um, did? I saw that. Yeah, there's a there's a company that makes games, uh, Zitalin, I think it is. They make these really easy games, but every few months they update the achievement list on them and add more achievements. Just for doing extra things, or? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I played through these games and 100% of them a long time ago mm -hmm. uh, and was going through my library today because I was just kind of bored and... Uh, I noticed that uh, there was 3,000 additional achievement points for both uh, Castle of No Escape and Castle of No Escape 2. 3,000 extra achievements? Yeah. Good so, Lord. and they take about 10 minutes to do. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm just like, and 6,000, I mean, yeah, about 6,000 achievement points in under like 15 minutes. Wow. So I've officially crossed the 300k mark. Oh my goodness. So this was the game you chose to cross the 300,000 <laughs> threshold. No, no, no. <laughs> Technically, the game that I chose is Far Cry 6. Oh, okay. So you waited so until I, like I got like right under? up to the point, and then I'm like, and crossover. Okay, that, that makes me feel <laughs> a little bit better at least. So are, are the games fun? I don't even know what no, they are. No, they're terrible. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're they're Such they're almost a ringing like, endorsement. Yeah, they're they're almost like old like Commodore sixty four text adventures. Ugh. So I mean, it's it's just like a grid system. It's like move up, down, left, right. You enter the room. You encounter something. Press A to attack or B to flee. That's, okay, that's it. That's yeah, it. that's it. And you just kind of make your way through each level, and it's like go up to the next floor. Oh, you made it to floor two. Two hundred achievement points. Jeez. So, Man, I thought I was an achievement whore. You have, like, far surpassed me. Oh, what are there, you, like, 70,000 ahead of me now or something? Uh, something like that. And you just I'm, like to twist the knife, like... <laughs> remember when I was, like, 80,000 ahead of you? Well, uh, you, you made the mistake one day of telling me, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to stay ahead of you. That's not a problem. <laughs> and I'm like, challenge accepted, <laughs> sir. Yeah, I forgot that you live in a weird time continuum where you just are able to get things done. I, I don't even understand it, but. I, well, well, I like the challenge. So when people throw down the gauntlet, I like to rise to the occasion. Okay, fair enough. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the week's news. All right, here's what happened in the week of video games this week. Uh, Masaki Yamagiwa left Sony and has joined Team Ninja. Xbox revealed its new 20th anniversary controller and headset. Sony Pictures revealed a trailer for Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. And also we got the reveal of the final Smash Brothers character, which is, yes, Sora from Kingdom Hearts. Uh, Alyssa, it has been... A minute since you've been on the show, so why don't you kick things off? Which of these stories appeals to you the most? Well, definitely Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, because even though the Mila Jovovich Resident Evil movies were not very faithful to the games, they were fun to watch. <laughs> and I did watch the trailer for this movie, and it does seem like it could be following the games more closely. Sure does. I have, I have hope. Cautious. Yeah. I'm cautious about it. But I have hope, and I do know the cast, because <laughs> I've watched a lot of shows that, you know, are on the CW and stuff like that, so. <laughs> yeah, Robbie Amell, isn't he, um, uh, oh man, what's that show, Arrow? Arrow? He is the cousin of the actor who is, who was Green Arrow. Okay. But you're right, Alyssa, this looks 
much more faithful than the other movies. Like there was a couple nods here and there in the original films, but they they straight up did the Silent Hill movie treatment with Resident Evil in this one in that they actually took the actual angles and perspective of some of the shots from the game like the the iconic zombie looking over the shoulder yes. when you first come in was right oh, yeah. there the uh, when they walked into the mansion the first time in the trailer i was like oh my god you guys are actually doing it guys are i'm you... amped for this i think this looks fun oh dude there's even so much more than that the fact that like the liquor actually yeah. looks oh, yeah. right mhm and not some roided out freak yeah. Like it, when you see the one zombie dog come up, and I'm like, it's everything I've ever wanted. Mm-hmm. I want to pet it. Let me it's play not with a dog it. with not with a dog covered in ketchup like it was in the, yeah. in the original Resident Evil yeah. movie. <laughs> but oh. it just, I, I mean, there's there's a few things about it that I'm like, eh. the fact that like Claire is a, a conspiracy theorist returning to Raccoon City to like take Umbrella down. Uh, yeah, that they they've twisted it a little bit, but uh I've also heard Whisker is not a villain for the majority of this movie. Well, I mean, he wasn't for the majority but, yeah, of the first game true. either. You didn't really know he was the villain until the very end. He was part of your team, right? Yeah, he was he was a Stars good member. guy yeah. for I'd say like 95% of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I lo- Neil McDonough, the actor Neil McDonough, he's one of those yes. actors that like <laughs> I recognize his face from so many movies. He always plays like a like a background always, character. Yeah, he's always a background character or a villain. Yep. He's always like a Bill Fichtner. Bill Fichtner is the same way. It's those those two actors I always see like never see him in leading roles in anything. But they get these like background characters in movies, but I don't know. I'm I'm excited for this one, guys. I think it looks a lot of fun. It really does. CB, I think we need to get yeah. a group together well, and, and, on, to, and go see this one together. Well, the thing that surprises me was the surprise announcement mm-hmm. and then like really quick release. Yeah. November 24th. Yeah. They're like, trailer comes out in a month and a half. And I'm like, what, when, when was this announced? Like, yeah. I didn't know. And only in theaters. This will not be a streaming release, at least, you know. It'll eventually come to home video and everything, obviously, but uh, they made a point to say that it's only coming to theaters, so you'll not be able to like watch it on HBO or anything like that. But I, I just part of me wishes they would have announced it a little bit earlier and released it in October during Halloween season. It does but, feel like a Halloween movie, but I don't know. You're getting close to the. That's going to be a Thanksgiving movie, I guess. I don't know. We are thankful for Resident Evil. Yeah, yes, right. very much so. <laughs> well, it's funny, though, because I, I actually get together with a group of friends every Black Friday, or, or you know, whatever whatever the politically correct way to say that is. Now, are we allowed to say that? I don't even know. Yeah, I haven't heard of any difference. Um, we I get together with some, some of my friends, and we always watch a movie series together, like, all day long. We get we start at, like, four in the morning, and we, like, one year we did Fast and the Furious, one year we did uh, Star Wars, one year we did Harry Potter. And we've been debating about whether or not we're going to do it this year, you know, because of COVID and everything. And I was like, you know, with the release of this movie, wouldn't it be fun to go back and just watch all the Resident Evil movies instead? And I thought that would be that'd be kind of cool. And the, they seem to be down with the idea. So I think the day after Thanksgiving, I'm going to watch all of the Resident Evil movies that I don't like very much, but it'll be fun. <laughs> I was about to say, I'd check out after like the second one and I'd be like, all right, I'm good. I, dude, even the first one made me roll my eyes when I saw it in the theater. Like Alice is like this little girl hologram that's red or not alice alice is the main character um yeah uh the red queen the red queen red queen yeah i don't i don't know why i messed that up but anyway resident evil welcome to raccoon city even the logo like the poster where they've got like an umbrella in the rain with the with the mansion in the background that is great marketing if you're going after gamers because yeah what you know what other series is, is is iconic that would actually make a good film? I mean, you could argue that like Mario and stuff like that is gonna you know gonna have a bigger appeal with kids and and long diehards of Nintendo, but Resident Evil just has well. Plus, they've made so many movies. It's just I, yeah. I can see this doing really well. Or, well, I'm just happy because we're finally getting that rise of video game movies that mm-hmm. don't suck. That's true. Yeah, Tomb Raider was pretty good. Tomb Raider uh, was good. Tomb Raider. Uh, Sonic was. Tolerable. 
Yeah, I mean that was yes. that was more of a kids movie, but it was yeah, it was I Jim Carrey being Jim Jim Carrey. <laughs> Detective even, Pikachu. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say Detective Pikachu. That was surprisingly fun. I didn't watch that one until it was on HBO, and I know nothing about uh, Pokemon, as you now know, Chris, <laughs> from our Patreon episode. Uh, that was a lot of fun. You did not have to know a ton about Pokemon to enjoy that movie. Was, Plus, I mean, no. you got Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu. Yeah, that, that pretty much sells, sells itself. Uh, CB, what about you? Any other stories that pique your interest? Uh, I, you know me and my collecting. Yeah. So that controller looks slick. It does look slick. It is a very nice controller. I've always loved when they do that smoked gray translucent. Mm-hmm. This is like a smoked green. Uh, the, the one I saw was smoked gray. Oh, I think God. the front is the smoked gray and back is green. Oh, we're both right, CB. Yeah. So, but it, man, it looks good. And I've been wanting to get some of the Xbox Series X, like special edition controllers. Mm hmm. Because almost every single one of them is a giveaway. <laughs> so it's it's so sad. Like, just give me like just mass produce some of these controllers. Take my dollars, please. Yeah, the the Godzilla controller that they did. I oh, still want to so find cool. one. But they're like, oh, we only made fifty. Good luck. And they they did the same thing with the Wonder Woman controllers. They were they looked really cool, and they're like, ah, eh, they're giveaways. Just like one person gets them. Yeah, which is sad, especially like the Xbox 360 era when it was like every other week they were pumping out a different one. I've got right. 15 different 360 controllers that are all different. And I have one Xbox One and no, like just none of the Series X ones. So this is for the 20th anniversary of Xbox in general. So are we at mm -hmm. the 20 year mark of the original Xbox? Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. Because it's going to be so. Old. Which Boy, makes me feel old, because I was in elementary school when that came out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Can we stop letting super young people be on the say podcast? Anything. <laughs> I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> elementary school. Uh, anyway, there's also a matching wired headset, the same design scheme. Both of these are going to release on November 15th. Each, they're going to each be $69.99 though. That is an expensive uh -uh. controller. No, no, it's not. That's, that's what they how go much, for um, now. That's Are how they much really? they charge for the uh, Forza Horizon 5 Special Edition controller. Mm, which I got one of those. You I've did. got one pre-ordered, yeah. So I bit the bullet for that I one. I didn't know you were a Forza person, Alyssa. I didn't know I was either until I played Horizon 4, and I loved it. I haven't played any of the mainline games, but Horizon 4 was just so much fun doing all the challenges and having my home and getting all these cars, and I just had a blast. Hmm. I never saw that coming. Yeah, um, uh, good luck to you guys. I I like special edition controllers, but not enough to drop 70 bucks for one. That's that's a game. <laughs> that, that's true, yeah. I, I, just, I just, I'm, I hardly ever look at my controller. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm looking at the screen, and if it's functional, that's, that's what matters most to me. Not knocking this whatsoever. Uh, you know, more power to you. I just, uh, yeah. I'd rather spend my money on a, on on a games or something instead. But uh, I want to mention briefly the reveal of uh, Smash Brothers final character Sora. Uh, not because I play Smash. I'm not a I'm I'm not a huge fan. I I have a copy of it that uh, just so that my students can play it. Uh, you know, at indoor recess. But uh, this is this is what a nerd I am, and just because I was caught up in the moment, the reveal happened in the middle of the school day. So we took a break from school. And I turned on YouTube and we watched it live. My class was just thought that was the coolest thing that the teacher put on a, a reveal. And they had no idea who Sora was, but they, they were excited that they were seeing a Smash Brothers character reveal. So, um, and apparently they went home and told their parents because I had talked to a parent later and they're like, yeah, they said you guys watched the Smash reveal and that's really cool. So I'm the, I'm the cool teacher for a day, apparently. But, I wish I had a teacher that cool. <laughs> What's irritating is I guarantee you some of those kids knew who Waluigi was. Um, you might be surprised how little they know when it comes to Nintendo mm. characters that aren't current. You know, they're nine, man. So, but it's, <laughs> I'm, it's, it's, it still bugs me that Nintendo went with Sora 
Because I'm like, let's use a non-Nintendo property instead of the Nintendo property that everyone's been clamoring for. Well, everyone else has been clamoring for Sora. It was it was like the most requested. I know the 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 loud minority was asking for Waluigi. Yes. But the actual majority wanted Sora. And it's impressive that they were able to make that happen. Honestly. Yes. But again, Waluigi, like the only Nintendo character that has yet to make an appearance in any Smash Brothers game. Yeah, is is Wario in there? Yeah. Is he? Yeah. I That's what I'm saying. Like you have every major Nintendo character except Waluigi. Poor guy. Nintendo, yeah. what is your problem with Waluigi? We need huh? we need a year of Waluigi. Remember we had a year of Luigi? Yeah, I remember. That would be pretty fun if they had like a year of Waluigi. I don't know. But but also, does does Smash need more sword wielding guys? I feel like that's just all they were releasing for a while there were those like Fire Emblem characters and Well, I mean he does have a keyblade, so I guess they kinda skirt under that. Yeah. It's not a sword per se. Right. Yeah, but need something new. Something fun and dorky. I'm with not you. that. Well, that's it for the news. I guess I should mention, uh, you know, this guy who left Sony, uh, Yamagiwa, if I don't mention this, Zach's going to yell at me, uh, has joined Team Ninja. This is the producer of Bloodborne. He left Japan Studio back in February, and uh, but Team Ninja says that they are not working on anything new in the Neo or Ninja Gaiden series. Uh, they are. This is also the developer behind Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin, which releases on March 18th. No clue Chaos. as to. <laughs> That's not the same thing. I just. Yeah, I, it. Anytime I see that that name of that game, I just think chaos, chaos, chaos. But uh, yeah. So, but but wasn't he talking about last week? Who you thought Bloodborne Two was going to be? What, I can't. Re- what developer was that? You, uh, you were here. Were you, or you were here, CB? No, I was here, but I can never remember because I I've, can never. Remember. I still have never played Bloodborne, so. I would like to see you try Bloodborne. Be take about ten, too. take about ten minutes, and I think he'd be done. I don't know, man. I, I played Sekiro for like twenty hours. Okay, didn't right. didn't finish it, but kept smashing my face against that wall. Well, neither did like ninety five percent of the people that played that game. So yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, I didn't finish Bloodborne. I loved it, and then I got to the halfway point, and for some reason gave up. I got to the third boss and just realized it was not a game for me. I appreciated that game, but I just did not have the patience to go through it. Moving on, we are an independently funded podcast, which means that we must pay for our podcast hosting services, website, and all that on our own, which is why we have a Patreon page where fans can contribute monthly to help offset the cost of production, as well as give back to the community, uh, such as the giveaways that we did this month. Those games that we purchased were uh, for us to review. CB is a uh, Playing Hot Wheels, he talked about on the show last week, although Sean Coates is doing the written review. Uh, I'm playing Metroid Dread, going to be writing a review for that later this week. And um, what was the other one? I um, Oh, Deathloop, which I have not completed to do a written review, but I got to try it out. And uh, those games were, were purchased with Patreon funds. We played them, and then we're passing them on to you guys. Uh, if you'd like to help out, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash the GoCast. And uh, let's see. CB, we've got some current episodes out. What can everybody listen to? Well, our Retro Outsider episode on the atrocities of the Indiana Jones series. There was one good one. Yeah, one. <laughs> so they're still fun to play. I love them dearly. Um, yeah. We also have uh, my take on some of the fraud that's going on in the video game collector's market. Mm-hmm. And then Scott's first attempt at a Pokemon game. I'm not going to live that down. I didn't finish the game, okay? You didn't, didn't finish fi- it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really monotonous, man. <laughs> when I were a kid, it would have been different. But anyway, you can hear us talk about, hear me talk about that and hear me get tongue lashed by CB and Zach for not finishing a game designed for 12 year olds uh, <laughs> on that episode. We're also working on some upcoming episodes to get you guys as well. We actually reached out to our Patreon community on Discord and asked them for some ideas of things they'd like us to talk about. So we have some things cooking for sure. If you'd like to contribute and help out, head over again to patreon.com forward slash the GoCast. Let's go ahead and jump now to the new games that we've been playing.
Thankfully, we have a little bit of a shorter list this week. Boy, they, they just keep getting, uh, <laughs> it was getting bigger and bigger for a while there. But uh, normally Zach reads these, but since he took the week off, I'm going to go ahead and man this. First off, Back for Blood hits PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox X and S, and Xbox One and PC on October 12th. This is the, uh, uh, what do you call it, Left for Dead? Left for Dead successor. Yeah, Left for Dead. It, it seems very much like Left for Dead. And I played the uh, the the beta. Was it a beta? Yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, I really enjoyed it. And a lot of people were kind of dogging on it. So I'm not sure how that one's going to, how people are going to feel about that one. But Disco Elysium, the final cut, makes its way to Xbox uh, Series X, Xbox One, Switch on October 12th. I know that uh, Thomas loves that game, raves about it. Oh, I loved it too. Did you? Okay. Mm-hmm. Monster Crown hits PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on October 12th. Ori, the collection, I guess the with, collection seems like a strong word when there's two games, but yeah. All right. Uh, it comes to Switch on October 12th. And uh, Slender, the arrival, if you like those spooky Slender games, iOS and Android on October 13th. Dungeon Encounters, PS4, Switch, and PC on October 14th. Always a good time. The Jackbox Party Pack 8 comes to pretty much everything. On October 14th, I will definitely be checking that one out. I check that out every year with the same group of friends, and we get together and have a great time. The Rift Breaker hits PS5 and Xbox X, Xbox Series X and S on October 14th. Crisis Remastered Trilogy hits uh, PS5, PS4, Xbox X and S, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on October 15th. Boy, he, I think he threw this one in here just to see if I'd mess up the pronunciation. Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba. Oh, I can do it. I can say it. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, The Hinokami Chronicles. There you go. PS5, PS4, Series X and S, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on October 15th. NHL 22 for all of you sports nuts out there. PS5, PS4, Series X and X, uh, Xbox One on October 15th. The Good Life, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on October 15th. And lastly... It says Glay Lancer, but I believe that game is... Isn't that Grey Lancer? No, it's Glay Lancer. It's Glay Lancer? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm mixing it up with a different game. PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One and Switch, October 15th. Alyssa, any titles you plan to pick up this week from that list? I'm really intrigued with The Good Life because I am a Swery 65 fan, love Deadly Premonition, had fun with Deadly Premonition too, and... I just like his style, and this is a debt um, collection game, but it seems very interesting. I've a debt seen collection the trailer. game. You mean like Animal Crossing? I actually don't know. I've <laughs> seen some characters. There is a like. There's a priest that likes to drink a little too much. There's nice. there's some wacky characters, as per usual with Swery's games, and I just want to experience it <laughs> so badly. <laughs> nice. Chris, I already know what your answer is going to be. What's that? Crisis Remastered Trilogy. Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Time to put on that suit again. I've never... Well, you had the the first one, don't you? Uh, Yeah. The first I beat one. that one. I've actually beat one, two, and three. And I've I beaten will... two and most of three back on the Xbox 360. I'm but just it's excited been a because while. more more achievement points for me. <laughs> I'm done, dude. I I give up. I I truly give up. Uh, I gotta, for me, I gotta Jack find Box, the next the next hire. <laughs> I'll find something I can beat you at one of these times. Uh, you want to do so, like compete on Super Meat Boy or something? See what, see what happens. Sure. <laughs> I've actually been playing a lot of Super Meat Boy forever, on and off. Oh, forever doesn't count. I'm talking about OG Meat Boy. You know what? Slap it. No, I will not do a slap bet with you. For me, it's going to be Jackbox Party Pack 8. I look forward to those every single year. They're just a, a, a ton of fun, and it gets me to play with people that don't normally play video games. I have a group that comes I've to... never gotten to play a Jackbox game. I well, feel like oh I'm missing God. out. We, well, we can stream it live on Twitch, and then we can all play on Discord together. How about that? That sounds like so much fun. That's what we did. We did that last year, didn't we, CB? We've done it for six and seven and... Yeah, six and seven. We did. We 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 streamed it and played with people on Discord. We should do that again for sure. I want to be a part. And the cool thing is, is nobody else has to buy the game. You just play with me. Like I stream the game, and then you guys pl- you just punch in the code and play. And it's a lot of fun. Those games are so much fun. I look forward to seeing what new stuff they come up with. They do a really good job of just coming up with something new 
every time. I don't necessarily love every game that comes in the collection, but there's always one or two that are just like, gotta play them. So it's always, look, it's always about murder trivia party, man. Murder trivia party is so good. It's such a clever way to make winners and make the people that are in last still feel like they're a part of it. You know, like yep. still have a chance. It's, it's really good. All right. It is time to talk about these new games we've been playing. Uh, I'm going to hand it off to Alyssa. So I see that you guys have been playing Far Cry 6, which is the latest entry in the Far Cry franchise. Mm -hmm. And I know there are some major differences already with this game, but I wanted to hear from your perspective. What do you think about the changes? Are you enjoying this game? Is it living up to the hype? I'm going to let CB go first because he's played much more than I have because I've been playing the other game more. I've only put about a couple, two or three hours into this game so far. I'm adoring it. Yeah? Yeah. Giancarlo Esposito, the game? <laughs> yes. Uh, um, yeah, th- there's actually uh, quite a few changes that they've made mm-hmm. uh, in this one. Uh, so far, I have yet to come across any climb towers. Well, there yeah, was pretty- uh, there weren't any in five, were there? Uh, they're kind of. Yeah, kind of, but not as many as this one. It's more were. Uh, conquer checkpoints. Uh, and the air missile defense stations. So oh far. yeah, yeah, yeah. I only came across one of those so far. I've cleared more than a third of the map. Of the entire map, or just the because I don't know if you move the cursor up. Have you seen how big the whole map is? I've it's already killed massive. one of the lieutenants, and I'm on my way to the second. Oh my goodness! So where um, do you get the time, man? It is I so unfair. It. I create it. I had do you the, sleep. I had the no. day off today, and I played games <laughs> all day long, and I did not even finish my game. So. Um, I have one thing to point out with Far Cry 6 that makes me laugh. I'm sorry, I have to do this. Fine. The character's name is Danny Rojas, which makes me think of Ted Lasso. Oh my goodness, I'd never even re- made that connection. Football is, is life! They have the same name! Football is life! Football is life! Which, by the way, is a clever way to make uh, make your character be either male or female. Because you can choose to... It is, yeah. It actually, it actually defaults to female. And uh, you, if you want to play male, you actually have to switch it to, to male, which I thought was interesting. Uh, I had to throw that in there. Sorry. As far as the changes, I know that was kind of how you led this question, Alyssa. There are some changes, but to me, Far Cry 6 just feels like an extension of the Far Cry series. Like, it, it still does everything that we love. It still has you taking down, uh, what, what do they call the, the bases or um, strongholds uh, or what, what do they call yeah. them? Strongholds, just strongholds, or you know, you. It, it took me a while, a little bit, to to finally find my sniper rifle and a, and a silencer because that's my weapon of choice in these things. Uh, CB, I know you love to just go all guns out and just mow will, everybody down. I will give you a dollar if you can guess what weapon I'm using the most. You'll give me a dollar. I'm assuming a it's like dollar. a Gatling gun of some kind. Nope. No. I'll give you one more guess. Uh, an RPG, like a rocket launcher or something. Is it the gun that shoots records? Nope. Though okay. I did just unlock that. <laughs> what um, is it? A pistol. A pistol? Yep. Wh- why? Is it just a really it's, good pistol? It's, uh, it's one of the unique pistols, mm-hmm. but um, headshots are a thing in this game by a wide margin. So what? if you can get your aiming down pat, it's literally just run through a base, Headshot, 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 headshot. Really? Including the elites. Wow. The, the ones that are wearing like the, the helmets with the eye slit, you can shoot through the eye slit. Oh my goodness, that's got to be a very precise headshot. It is a really good pistol. I'm All not right. going to lie. Um, I saw that there is a bow and arrow that you can unlock, which was my weapon of choice in Far Cry 3 and 4 for sure. Um, have not been able to find that yet, but I, I I love weapons that I can shoot from a distance and then collect my ammo when I'm done and never run out of ammo. So, Alyssa, did did you play Half Life? I was or not Half-Life able to. 2? I was not able to play either game because they both made me extremely motion sick. Mm-hmm. Okay, well for those Half Life fans out there, the crossbow that impales people and sticks them to things. It's in this game. 
That does sound I'm, cool. I'm loving the crap out of that gun. Nice. Uh, so yeah, there are there are changes, but I feel like the changes are more tweaks than changing anything with with the formula. It still feels very much like a Far Cry game. Uh, you've got you. you I, I I guess this there's not really a, is there even a skill tree? No. That was something I was going to bring up. They don't have a skill tree anymore. Everything is tied to your weapon and armor stats. Right. Right. Like you can, uh, and it, it it takes a little while to wrap your head around it because it's a lot of comparing weapons. I feel like I didn't do that before. In previous games, I just had the rocket or the grenade launcher mm -hmm. or the machine gun you know, or whatever. There weren't like different versions of it. So that is interesting. It feels more like a loot grab at some point, but I haven't got far enough for that to be real impactful for me. How about you, CB? Uh, it does, but I mean, you'll, you'll get to the point that you'll find like one or two weapons that feel really good and just stick with them. I mean, I've, I've got, uh, my, my pistol that I use a rifle, uh, the torque bow and a grenade launcher. That's nice. it. And I haven't, since I got those four weapons, I haven't, I've unlocked a bunch of weapons. I haven't touched any of them. Wait, unless did you it's, say torque bow? Well, it's, it's, it reminds me of a cross between the torque bow and then the, the crossbow from Half-Life 2. Okay. I got excited. Because it, it's got a there. bit of a wind up and then it fires. Gotcha. But yeah, it's, it's, it's good, clean fun. One of the bigger changes in this game is this, uh, I don't even know what you call it, this backpack with, a, with depleted uranium powering it that you carry around with you. The Supremo? I, the, Supre the Supremo. Um, I, I have obviously not got as far as CB, but that thing is pretty cool. I've only got yeah. where like it, it basically shoots rockets out your back like as a salvo towards like the people ahead of you, and it just looks cool. <laughs> there's there's different ones by the way yeah can you give an example or is that spoilery um there's one that shoots poison clouds there's one that has electricity there's one that's healing because this game is also multiplayer oh nice have you done any of the co-op nope not yet i mean there was so, co-op in the other ones as well right mm -hmm. yeah um so there's there's some missions later on that you can tell would be a blast with a friend Okay. Can you play anywhere together in co-op or can you like play the whole game together or is it just like I it felt limited I in the don't really ones. know. So I we'll have to find out. The other thing the, I will say about this game that stood out to me is watching the commercials for Far Cry 6 because this game has been marketed like crazy. They're playing it during sports games and everything like that. And obviously because Giancarlo Esposito is like the 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 poster child for this game. Um they're definitely using that to sell it for sure. But whenever they show those commercials, or even when we saw the trailers for it during E3, the characters looked off to me. And this is a rare instance where when I actually got my hands on the game, the cutscenes and everything look better in the game than they do on TV. Do you feel that way, CB, or am I just imagining it? Well, oh, I think that's also because we were getting early slices. Mm -hmm. So now, now that they've been cleaned and polished, yeah, they look pretty good. I mean, every now and then they do something that's like a little off. Right. Like, the the way their face moves, I'm like, uh, didn't quite get it right, but close. Right. Uh, I, I'm just really impressed with how it looks. Oh yeah, it it looks beautiful. Even just the surrounding environment. Uh, there there is one change that they've made to this game that I utterly hate. Okay, what's that? When you enter a camp, mm -hmm. uh, it goes from first person to third person. Oh, I heard about that. Oh, I haven't seen that. I haven't had that so happen yet. So when, when you get to the mainland, if you go into the, the Liberator's camp, like your base camp, uh -huh. it goes from first person to third person. That and seems like that would be disorienting. It, it is super disorienting, especially if you're trying to get out of the camp sometimes because there is one camp, there is a wall around the camp. Mm -hmm. So if you stray too close to the edge... It starts shifting back and forth. Oh no! Which I'm like, oh god, that 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 makes me a little nauseous. Oh, um, yeah, that is that because they gets, want you to see the backpack thing. Yeah, uh, it gets a little irritating with that, so I do not like it. But it slows you down. You can't pull out your weapons. You can't test fire anything. So if you're like, 
oh, cool, I'm at the workbench. I'm going to work on my weapons. I'm going to switch weapons. There's no, like, range to test them. You have to run out of the camp to shoot them. So I'm like, that's annoying. Oh, I see, because they don't let you fight, make any shots inside a camp. No, they don't. Gotcha. Um, I I still... One of the reasons you can speed through this game so quick, like the rest of the Far Cry games, is once you get to a point that you can get a helicopter and save it at your garage, it just hop in my helicopter, fly to the next thing, shoot the crap out of everything, fly back, turn in mission. Oh, nice. So oh, no. Just, like, <laughs> blasting through missions? Or, is yeah, it, does it feel like you're breaking the game a little bit? No, because they definitely ramped up the difficulty, like if you try to do that, the special forces come in with multiple attack helicopters and you're like, okay, this is hard. Uh, uh, I do love that. They, there seems to be a lot more cosmetic polish on this game. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that your weapons, you can put like keychains on your weapons. Mm -hmm. Little like uh, trinkets or charms. Yeah. Like the, I found the there chorizo seems one. To be a, oh, the chorizo. Oh, I love chorizo and I haven't even played the game. <laughs> I chorizo is funny i'll give him that because uh you can also unlock multiple companions instead of people like in previous games mm -hmm. they're all animals oh yeah the first one is an attack gator which i thought was a joke <laughs> Guap at first. guapo guapo i also saw champagne yep there's there's a um, there's a rooster <laughs> um an attack rooster let's oh, see yeah. champagne is champagne a um what kind of cat is champagne? <laughs> like a lynx or something? I think it's, it's like a cougar. Bobcat? Bobcat? I don't know, I cougar? One of I, those? I don't know, because I haven't unlocked champagne yet. I, I will say, though, I'm surprised that this game put something in it that is so controversial, though. What are you talking about? Rooster fighting. Oh, oh I've heard about that. PETA got upset about that. Oh, yeah, and it, they don't shy away from it. It's in a lot of the base camps, and you put spurs on these roosters, and they legitimately fight out. It's like a Mortal Kombat fight, too. <laughs> what? <laughs> because, like, when you knock the rooster out, it's like, K.O., and it's like, the whole, the rooster, like, flies back and, like, bounces a couple times. Wait, you're actually controlling the rooster? Yep. Like, it has, oh my goodness. Has, like, a long strike, short strike, a power-up, and then they have a special meter. Oh yeah. my goodness! I had no idea that there and was actually a rooster And there's 19 different fighting. roosters that you can unlock. Oh my god! Get out of town! I'm dead serious, dude. It is. I'm like, this is wild. Uh, Michael Grimm from our community made a comment that said this game should have been called Just Cause Six. Do you agree with that sentiment? Yeah. This to me, this honestly feels more like a Just Cause game than it does a Far Cry game. Does it really get that ridiculous? Because Just Cause got pretty ridiculous. Um. Yeah. It it gets a little wild, bro. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Don't like, you dare spoil anything, because I am planning to play this in, after I finish Metroid. I will say there there are parts that are verging on Saints Row ridiculous. Oh, okay. Okay, that's pretty ridiculous. Are you enjoying so, that aspect of it, or do you think it's dumb? Uh, I kind of wish it went back a little more towards, like, Far Cry 5. Yeah. But uh, it's... The combat is still fun. I've even done some fishing, so. Ugh. I know. <laughs> I yeah. have the same reaction, Scott. The little I've played, the, the combat feels great. The guns feel awesome. Um, is this the one where they jam? Or what was I playing recently where, they, where the weapons jam? Did I haven't it, had any jam yet, so. I played, I played something recently where, oh, it was Deathloop where the weapons jam, and I didn't like that. So, yeah, these weapons don't, don't jam, but the, they, they feel great everything just it just feels like the way you want a far cry game to play so if you like far cry you're gonna you're gonna enjoy this yeah uh i highly recommend it it's it's some good fun which is funny because a lot of people are giving far cry 6 a hard time for being more of the same but they're praising the game i played for being more of the same which i don't I was, understand yeah so well you know what let's just kind of Take a look into that. Mm -hmm. Scott, you've been playing Metroid Dread. Oh, man. Yes, I have. <laughs> so much Metroid Dread. I, I had the day off today, and I, and I seriously got up and fired up my 
switch almost immediately after my coffee was done. It was just, I could not wait to keep going in this game. But uh, before you dive too far into it, I want to say one thing. Yeah. I saw, I've, I've been watching some YouTube videos lately and I've been getting smashed in the face with Metroid Dread ads. Yeah. Try, try not to spoil um, anything. I don't know what I'm, you've I'm seen. Not, I'm not. Okay. So, but uh, can can we just call this Metroid Red Planet? Metroid Red Planet? My, the Val why? Kilmer movie? Amy I don't the think Robot? I've seen it. I haven't seen it either. Oh my God. I actually pulled out a pop culture reference that Scott doesn't know. Yeah. The, the robot in Metroid Dread looks exactly, almost identical to me to the robot in the movie Red Planet with Val Kilmer and Carrie Ann Moss. Oh, I would not have got that. Uh, funny you say that, though, the, the robot you're referring to is called the Emmy, which the acronym is escaping me, the E-M-M-I. Uh, there's actually seven of them. There's not, but, just, there's not just one, and each one is different colored, and you have to take out all seven of them as you go through uh, this new planet. That um, makes it even funnier because that, that robot that I was talking about uh-huh. in the movie, its name is Amy. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Anyway, Metroid is Metroid Dread is exactly what I wanted in a new 2D Metroid game. I know we saw this announced at E3, and uh, at least I was super excited. I can't remember. I can't remember if you're, you're if you're a big Metroid guy. You haven't played Super Metroid, have you, CB? I have not. Oh, man, we need to remedy that like soon. Alyssa, are you a Metroid person? I've never played a Metroid game, <sighs> but I really want to. Oh my goodness. Uh, so anyway, I'm just going to be talking to myself for this whole part here, but um, I, I have a fairly decent knowledge of Metroid, even though I haven't really played much. All right. All right. So this game takes place. They actually kind of recap the story of the original Metroid, Metroid two and, uh, super Metroid and then Metroid, um, fusion. Um, and they actually brought those four games together and made it seem a lot more cohesive in its opening cinematic. So you really don't even need, had to have played the other ones to get the story, which is cool. Um, and they do it in a way that doesn't spoil the major fun events of the original games, if that makes sense. So you still get, if you've never played them before, you'll still get those fun surprises. But um, this game does a good job of marrying all of those um, mechanics and bringing them into one and also adding a few new things. I just really love, because it it follows the Metroid formula of, you know, you have to backtrack, you wind up coming back using a weapon or item that you acquired to be able to uh, access new areas. That's kind of the formula for Metroid games and Castlevania games or gear-gated 2D adventures, like Zach likes to call them. (laughs) Um, But they do it a little bit more smartly here. I mean, sure, you're going to have, you know, you have to have missiles to open up red doors, which is a trope in in, in Metroid. Um, You know, you're going to have to have a certain weapon to open up this door. But they do other things in a way that are just really clever. Like, I got this one ability that uh, basically cloaks your character. And um, in order to pass through certain doors, you have to have this thing, this cloak on. Otherwise, a sensor trips and closes the door and keeps you from going in. So instead of it just being like, I just have this weapon and it just now makes it available. I actually have to arm it. I don't know. It's just it's just kind of interesting to do. Um, there are other tweaks to the formula that if you guys haven't played Metroid games, you won't know. So I'm not going to go into too much detail doing it. Um, but the bigger changes, um, they, they've turned part of Metroid Dread into a stealth game. Each of the different areas in this world, in this planet, I believe it's planet ZDR, if I remember, if I'm... Um, remember that correctly, maybe Nate can correct me if I've got that wrong, Um, has a section that is called the, quote, Emmy section, where basically you're being stalked by one of these Emmy robots. And if they see you, um, they will keep tracking you until you, you know, get far enough away from them, Assassin's Creed style, where they stop looking for you. And if she catches you, or one of these robots catches you, it makes a quick time event where there's like a you know, a little light flashes and you have to press the button to be able to dodge her attack, which will just straight up kill you and you get a game over. Um, but it's it's so difficult to get that down. Uh, Nate is telling me that Planet ZDR is correct. Um, it's so difficult to get that timing down because you can't anticipate it. It's not like you see it and then can react to it. You actually have to press it before it gets there. It's very, very hard to do and intentionally so. So they really incentivize you from 
um, from getting caught by this thing. Thankfully, you eventually get the cloak, which allows you to hide in certain places. And it becomes a cat and mouse game where you have to get through the area just to reach the next section. So you have to make, make your way through this section without getting captured by this Emmy robot. And then eventually you'll acquire a weapon that will allow you to defeat this Emmy robot. And then you move on to the next one. Um, so you, you, you kind of got that formula like you do in a lot of games. Like I have seven of these things I have to destroy. Um, but they're not the bosses either. They just happen to be there in, in, in the world. Um, and I'm trying to dance around stuff without giving it away, but they also, they, they turn that formula on its head as you get through the game and it gets really interesting story-wise what happens. Um, if you're a Metroid fan, this is a must play. There is so much familiarity to the way the game plays and some of the weapons, um, but they do enough different to make it feel like a fresh experience. And you'll, you'll have a lot of flashbacks and callbacks to um, things from previous games. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to dance again because I don't want to ruin anything for anybody. Um, and if you know anything about Samus's lore, this story is particularly interesting with her, uh, with her upbringing. I will, I will say that. And, mm. uh, the bo- oh, oh, Samus also has a new ability to basically do a, a, a counter move where like if she's attacked, an enemy will like do this little like bright flash. And then if you time it right, you can like basically block it and makes that character vulnerable. And then you can attack it for, for more damage. That is a new feature that's never been done in a, in a Metroid game before, to my knowledge. So, so Sam- Samus got a stun? Kind of, yeah. It's like a, it's like a counter stun. And... But the cool thing is, is you get to use those in boss battles too. So the bosses will will do movements like that, and if you time it correctly, then you get a, a chance to just unleash some some missiles, which is a lot of fun. But even better is some of these bosses have they turn into quick time events almost, but just very simplistic. And then Samus does these leaps and slides and ripping jaws open and uh, like stomping on heads and things that she's we've never seen her do before because in previous games the technology limited you to um you know just being sprites and kill the enemy and it just disappears and crumbles into fire and that's it now she's actually like doing finishing moves on bosses which is really rad it's it's really really cool it sounds so cool it really yeah. is um it's a game that's easy to get lost in or 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 um it's easy and it's not e- easy to get lost. If you sit down and power marathon your way through like I've been doing and you got the map constantly fresh in your mind, you're fine. Where I struggle is when I play a game and then I put it down for the night and I come back just even a day later and I feel like, where do I go? The game does not give you any checkpoints. It does not give you any head to this area. You just do. But the way that the game is designed it's always pushing you in the right direction, even though you're not, even without like giving you a waypoint on your map, which I think is really brilliant. Um, you can go off the beaten path and go back to previous areas with new abilities to find hidden missile power ups and hidden energy capsules, like you can in previous games. But as long as you remember where you are or where you were uh, to go in the right direction to make the game press forward, you'll be fine. And in fact, the map actually gives you. The ability to mark your map. You've got like five different emblems that you can use to, or different colors of emblems. And you can just leave it there to remind yourself, I need to come back here after I go exploring and then come back and remove it and move on. So that's also a new feature in Metroid games. That definitely seems like something that almost all modern Metroidvania games need. To some degree, yes. Um, it, it depends on, on the, the one. For a game like this, it works. For a game... It's, I want to say some part of it may take you out of the immersion a little bit because like, you know, well, why we have a map at all? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like it's, it's funny how in Metroid games, there's always a little terminal that Samus can just jam her um, blaster into and interface with whatever computer and download the map data and, and get her energy recharged and save her game and all this kind of stuff. Like what, what are the chances? Kind of like how R2D2 could plug into everything in the Star Wars movies. You and just had, port. Is it a USB-D port? Is that what it is? Yeah. I don't know. But 
Uh, but those are just things that don't matter. You're not worried about that when you're playing a Metroid game. Um, sadly, I did not finish it. I tried so hard to finish this game because I wanted to get this copy out to, uh, to uh, our winner as, as quickly as possible. Um, I thought I was at the end. I looked up on, on a walkthrough to see if I was near the end, and the section that it said I was in was right before the final boss. And I'm like, all right, I'm heading for the final boss right now. Turns out that the website I was looking at hadn't finished the walkthrough yet. So I was as far as they had finished in the walkthrough, so I still had some more to go. But uh, I I will tell you the pacing in this game feels a lot better than most Metroid games. Like it feels, in other ones, it feels like it's forever before you get a new power up. You're constantly searching and searching and searching. This one, you're getting one very often. They've done a really good job with pacing to make you feel like you're really pushing forward and ahead. So uh, I will report back next week, hopefully with finishing it. But um, as a huge Metroid fan, I have been for 25, however many years that, since that game. It's got to be 30 years, actually. Um, I'm loving this game. Seriously loving this game. A lot of love has been put into it. And um, I, can't, I seriously can't wait to finish recording so I can go play some more. It's that good. So, I want to play it now. Yeah. You oh oh, I didn't tell you this, CB. If you beat it, it unlocks zero mission on the Switch. I didn't nice. know that. Or if I if I was told that I forgot it. So if you beat the game, you actually get get uh Zero Mission, Alyssa, is a remake of the original Metroid. So if you ever want to play the original Metroid, play Zero Mission. It's just a much better experience. Oh cool. So I definitely want to play. It was on the Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance. Yep. And uh, that was actually in that copy. That there was a copy of that game in that Game Boy Advance I found for you at a garage sale, wasn't it? I've been it? I've been playing through it little by little. It's, I beat that game in like four hours or something. I did not remember the game was that short, but it's really good. Anyway, that is Metroid Dread. CB, I wanted to talk to you because you've also you also picked up the Alan Wake Remastered, which is a game I want to play so badly. I just there was just too many. There was two huge games coming out this week. I was going to touch it, but you have a time portal. Uh, and we were able to to do this. So, did you play the original? I assume you did. Uh, I st- so it's funny because I started playing the original, mm-hmm. and then because uh, Zach and I have talked about it, because I fell in love with Remedy games. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I've played everything they had except this and Max Payne. Mm-hmm. So I started playing it, and then they announced the remaster, and I'm like, all right, you know what? I've played enough of the original. I'm just going to stop here and wait till the remaster comes out. Oh, so you like, like right before. Okay. This is a fun experiment. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I've put a little bit of time into it. I mean, I, I unlocked, uh, like a couple of achievements. I started playing it today. The new uh, one. Yeah. The, okay. the remastered one. And, uh, I will say one thing. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's just a polish. That's yeah. all it is. It, it kind of reminds me of uh, what they did with the Assassin's Creed Ezio trilogy, mm-hmm. where they're just like, oh, just polish it a little and ship it back out. Right. So, so far, it doesn't really feel like anything's been cleaned up from the 360 one to this one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a little little brighter, a little more crisp. Um, that uh, the opening scene. Like the opening nightmare, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the the storm seems like it was a little better fleshed out. But beyond that, I'm really not noticing anything yet. Isn't it weird. I mean, we knew this going into it. They weren't changing anything mechanically. It was just a touch no. up, more or less. I'm I'm more curious to see because I stopped uh, shortly after I got into Bright Falls mm-hmm. for the day. Uh, I was, I'm going to touch, like play some more of it tomorrow, but, uh, I want to get to the points where you start seeing, like there was the TV show. I want to see oh, yeah, how the TV show, That's I want to so see how, fun. like, cause supposedly they removed that. They removed it. Why? Like, well, not, uh, not, no, not the TV show. There was something they that they the, removed. Some of the soundtrack was removed because of oh, licensing. Okay. So like, yeah. if they removed the TV show. I'm going to riot. So yeah. I want to, I want to see how that plays out. Um, I am noticing though that R- Remedy has an obsession with spirals. <laughs> okay, because like there's the shot of Alan Wake where he's like 
looking up the lighthouse, you have the spiral. Uh, you have Polaris from Control, which is a spiral. Okay. Quantum Break. Order. Order the machine the is a spiral. I'm like, interesting. Some somebody really likes spirals here. Now, was this a forty dollars title? Yeah. No, no, it was thirty. Thirty. Okay. Yeah, it's twenty nine ninety nine. That's so, not too bad. Um, no, and like I said, because it has been cleaned up a little bit graphically, uh, I'm I'm excited to play through it because I can be like, hmm. Now I've checked almost all the the remedy games off my list. So you're gonna move on to Max. You and Zach need to do a Max Payne break the scene. I would I would love to see them do a Max Payne remaster because every time I look at that game, I'm like, if there's a, <laughs> like that game needs that game needs a spit polish. Well, wasn't Max Payne originally on PS2? Mm-hmm. Yeah. PS2 and original Xbox. And I've never era. played the first Max Payne. It looks I've- Rough. The only Max but, Payne I played was the one where he was wearing like a Hawaiian shirt. Was that Max Payne 3? Three. three. Yeah, I played 3. That's the only one I played. I wasn't super impressed with 3. Yeah, from from what Zach always says, it's like 1 and 2 are where it's at. Yeah. Well, yeah, everybody did two. 1 and 2, and then Rockstar took control of 3. It was entertaining. I just It just wasn't like mind-blowing or anything, but I also didn't finish it, so who knows. But anyway, Alan Wake... Remastered. You gonna you gonna finish it? You need to finish oh, yeah, that story, I'm, man. Well, I'm gonna finish it. It's it's, it's so good. It's spooky. It's spooky month. That's true. It's my spooky game. You know, I was gonna I was gonna stream Dead Space two for uh, spooky season. That would be more fun to stream. It would because yeah. that will feel like a new game to me because I, I I talk about this in past episodes. Alan Wake came out at the same time as Super Mario Galaxy two and Red Dead, so I played Alan Wake first. Because I was like, it was like, I think it's only like a 12 hour game, right? And I, I, and I, so, yeah. and I ran through it like that weekend and I've never played it again since. So when you play through a game that quickly, that long ago, it's going to feel like a first time playing. I, I see. I want to, I want you for, I, I like, I want to stream this, but for, for spooky season, I want you to play Alien Isolation, but with the connect controls on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't have a Connect. I do. And the I old Connect make it still works with an Xbox Series X. Oh, no, I'd have to break out the Xbox One. Oh come on! But i i want I want to make this happen just because I still think there are parts of that game that are utterly terrifying. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, bro, we know the Dead Space formula because you didn't finish Alien Isolation, did you? I didn't make it very far at all. I heard That's that it was saying. like I, I heard that that game dragged on and it just was was too long, and I just mm, kind of checked out at that point. So, I want to play. I, I want to do a stream game where we where we where we do pass the controller. Like you and I just sit yeah. down. Like maybe we do that because we're going to extra life at the end of this month, right? I'm going to try. You're going to try. I'm going for sure. But we should do so. our own little like maybe not extra life, but our own little like marathon where we decide we're going to sit down and beat a game. Passing the controller back and forth. Maybe sit out, sit outside, do the gaming outsider again. Yeah. So I so still got to play through. It takes two, man. I would, you know, why don't we do that? Why don't we sit down and play through? It takes two together. Yeah, I'm down for it. That's not even a passive controller. That's just like, let's just do it. Game is yeah. so good. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on. I want to do some quick housekeeping to remind everybody about our social media outlets. If you'd like to join some of our communities, here's how you can do that. First off, Facebook. Our uh, website is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the GoCast. And we have some new members to say hello to. So please give a warm welcome, if you can, to Caitlin Christie, Rhett Danger, Jim Gregory, and Daniel Gilmore. I recognize Daniel Gilmore from the Discord community. And speaking of the Discord community, we have a Discord server that you can join as well. Uh, Be sure to head over there. The link is in the show notes of this very episode if you'd like to join it. Also. If you are listening to this episode and you enjoy it, do us a favor and drop us a review, whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, Google Play Music, wherever you're you're listening. uh, Those positive reviews help us get the word out to everybody else that we've got a quality show over here and we really do appreciate it. Finally, our website is thegamingoutsider.com and there you will find links for all of our episodes. You'll also find all of our written content. Uh, where we, we review games and occasionally we do some editorials as well. And uh, you will be seeing quite a few more reviews from me here in the near future because I have a lot to catch up on. 
But if you'd like to check that out, it is thegamingoutsider.com. All right, before we get over to our uh, From the Outside In topic, I want to take a moment to talk about Manscaped, which is a product that all three of us have been using. And uh, if you're not familiar, Manscaped is a product designed mostly for men uh, for uh, doing some trimming in areas that are not on your face. And uh, CB and I have both been using these products, and Alyssa, actually. Uh, I have, yes. You have. All right. Well, I don't know how comfortable you feel t- talking to us <laughs> about your experience, Elizabeth. We've been raving about this stuff, and not just because it's a sponsor, but I, I genuinely love this this product. C- can you tell us about your experience? I'll just say I really like the razor. I can't use everything that came in the package mm-hmm. for reasons. Well, yeah. But I really the like the razor. toner in particular? The toner and the deodorant. Yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> I really like the razor. Does a great job. Mm-hmm. Really high quality. Uh, the travel bag, the t-shirt. Like, love the t-shirt. It's comfortable. <laughs> and I did give the weed whacker to my dad, and he really likes it. Okay, so the weed whacker is the the nose the hair, ear and nose. Yeah, I don't really have issues with that. So right, I wanted someone else to try it, and he said he gives his stamp of approval for that. Very cool. That's awesome. I'm finding, and Zach mentioned this the last two weeks on this, that with the the lawnmower 4.0, which is their latest version of it, you can tell they've they've made all kinds of awesome tweaks in this. I, I, every time I use it, I'm worried that I'm I'm just waiting for it to pull. I'm waiting for it to get snagged or something to pull a hair, and it just never ever happens. It's a it's a great thing. CB, you agree? Yeah, I I completely agree, and. Another thing that I'm actually really surprised with, because now that I've been using it for a while, the cleanup on it is yeah. actually really impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've actually killed multiple trimmers before, because uh, this beard and body hair is awfully thick. Yeah, and it it legitimately does a good job at taking care of that. And cleanup is super simple. It's it's shockingly easy to clean. It doesn't. It just takes a wipe, and you're pretty much done. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, sure. Manscaped, if you guys would like to try out these, this, uh, product, highly recommended. Also the, uh, the boxer shorts. I know you're not using those, the Alyssa. Um, oh, I wear boxer shorts to oh, sleep Oh, you do? In. Yeah. So how are you finding those? They are very comfortable. Aren't they? They're just silky smooth, right? They are. They're fantastic. I love those things. I need to get another pair for myself, but if you'd like to check those out or the lawnmower 4.0, or the deodorizer we talked about that has replaced my stick of deodorant, uh, you know, in terms of an everyday use kind of thing. Um, the 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 weed whacker, which is for getting those pesky hairs up your nose and in your ears. Which, if you're not there yet, trust me, you'll you'll get there. Uh, it, it becomes an issue <laughs> sooner or later. Um, but we have a special promo for you guys to try it out yourself. If you'd like to, head over to manscaped.com, and if you use the promo code THEGOCAST, that will give you 20% off your purchase, and it will give you free international shipping. So you've got a great uh, excuse to try it out. You get 20% off and free shipping. Why not give it a shot? Give it a shot. Find out why we love it so much, and let us know what you think. All right, we're going to go ahead now and jump into our From the Outside In topic. This week, I wanted to talk about game mechanics that would never work in real life. We've all been playing games for decades now, right? And there are just so many things that you can do in video games that defy the laws of physics. But we've we've just gone along with them for years. So we're going to discuss the ones that stuck out to us and our community and decide if it bothers us at all. But before we get to the actual answers or the ones that we came up with. I want to know if this kind of thing bothers you guys. Do you, do you suspend disbelief or would you like your games to be more grounded in reality? CB? Depends on the game. It does depend on the game. <laughs> it, it, it really does. If, if I'm playing something that's more realistic, I would prefer to trim the fat, I guess to say, mm-hmm. and kind of get rid of some of the tropes. But if I'm playing something like a Mario game, I expect it to be there. I mean, right. I don't know of too many human beings that can double jump into a somersaulting butt slam. Yeah, like like this that doesn't happen in real life. So, what about uh, like even like in more realistic games? I mean, they're they're like look at Uncharted, right? 
Uncharted is somewhat grounded in reality, right? It's not Mario jumping on turtles and Goombas. But he does some things that just don't make any sense. Like, are you, like, do, I would, do we just I would like. I say that if I played Uncharted. Oh, my goodness. Remember, we, we've oh, had so this conversation. Oh. <laughs> okay, CB has not played Max Payne. He's not played Uncharted. He's not played Ocarina of Time. Um, he hasn't played any Zelda games except for the original and Zelda 2. Zelda, Zelda 2, Breath of the Wild, Phantom Hourglass. Okay. Faces of Evil, Wand of Gamelon. Okay, those don't count. Those aren't Zelda games. <laughs> they the say Legend list, of Zelda on them. The growing list of Break the Seal games for Chris Berensmeyer alone. We could just have an entire segment. We're not even going to call it Break the Seal. We're just going to call it CB Breaks the Seal. Well, I've I, legitimately, I've been trying to check more and more of them off. Yeah, that's Unlike true. someone else. Who, me? Yes. What? Because I didn't. I didn't finish one Pokemon game. You didn't. Fin- you didn't finish Link to the Past, sir. No, but I played more than I played more of it than you did of Pokemon. Oh my goodness! Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Battle win. <sighs> Alyssa, what about you? Does it bother you at all when when games do things that just don't make any sense? Not really. I am used to suspending my disbelief by now with a lot of things and movies, books, video games. So, I mean, a lot of things in games you have to suspend your disbelief with because, you know, no one has regenerating health. You can't (laughs) double jump in real life. Right. If you play the Resident Evil 7 and 8, you can't just get a limb and put it back on and it stays. Like, (laughs) you just kind of have to go with the flow and just kind of enjoy the narrative and what they're giving you. But I will say if I'm playing something such as Firewatch, obviously I want it to be as realistic as possible, which mm-hmm. it was. Um, those kind of games do need to be, I think, more realistic. But for the most part, most video game mechanics, you don't get that in real life. So I just enjoy it for what it is. I mean, one of the things that I've always thought about with video games is that I've always wanted them to be as close to to real life as possible. I've always wanted the technology to get better, faster, stronger, to where you can't even tell that it's a video game compared to a movie, right? Is that what you guys want? Is that I feel like my answer, as I've changed, has gotten older because I tend to gravitate more towards games that don't make any sense in the physical world instead of the realistic ones that I thought I wanted when I was a kid. You know what I mean? Like... Like, I'm playing Metroid right now, where you can not only double jump, you can continuously just do, do, do as much as you want when you get the certain power up. That doesn't make any sense. No. But I freaking love the game. You're playing Far Cry 6 right now. You have an attack gator and an attack chihuahua. It's not a chihuahua. Is it a little Doberman or something? To be perfectly honest, you could train them. You, you could train, a, you could train a, <laughs> an alligator? Or is it a crocodile? I can't remember. It's an alligator. Can you, you could train an, an alligator you to could. just attack for you. I'm. It's an. I, it, it's more believable than double jumping and turning into a ball and rolling through tunnels. That's fair. But it's so, cool. Uh, it's so it's an attack alligator. <laughs> <laughs> that that's completely fair. The first time <laughs> when you see that cut scene, I know we saw it at uh, at the E three presser, but like the first time that gator just comes out and just like mauls this soldier. I was just like, all right, I'm in. I'm yep. in. Pretty good. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm not really sure how I feel about it because there are some times where I go, oh, come on, that doesn't make any sense. But it, it, it feels like the cynic in me coming out and trying to be like, well, that, like, like the Neil deGrasse Tyson of video games, like that would never happen in real life. You know what I mean? Is it just me being cocky or is, like, I don't even know what I want. At this point. Uh, again, I, I just think it depends on the situation in the game. Yeah. That, and that's the biggest problem with it. I, it just feels like such a cop-out answer, though. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it there's, depends on the game. I mean, I agree no, with you. There's no such thing as bad abilities, oh just goodness. abilities that aren't for you. <laughs> I just like the escapism. I just want to go to a different world, have different powers. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Well, let's go to some of the listeners and uh, some of the suggestions that they had for things that just don't make sense in terms of the physical world. Starting with Sean Coates, the crafting mechanics in most games comes to mind. Taking simple ingredients and creating complex machines out of them. Uh, Fallout says hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. 
Dead Rising. So oh, Dead hello. Rising. Yeah. I have not played it, but I know I've I've seen some of the videos of things that you could put together. Uh, he said also only getting three to five rounds when looting an enemy after that enemy pretty much unloaded 50 to 60 rounds at you before taking him out. Common in survival games. The Last of Us in particular is very guilty of this. That's true. Well, I they mean, only have three to five rounds left because they just dumped yeah, they 50 to 60 rounds into so you. Many. Right. Yeah. And they barely reload. And when they do, they announce to the world. Who does that, Reloading! By the way? Reloading! <laughs> You're like basically giving away your position in a survival <laughs> game. Cover me, I'm reloading! Um, the crafting, though, is pretty, is pretty funny. Yeah. It's just MacGyvering. Like, well, I mean, at least, like, the Far Cry games, they, like, actually show it, like, duct taped together. Even the, like, yeah. even the, what, what do you call that, uh, Supremo? Yeah. It, it, like, it's literally held together with duct tape. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, that's part of the fun about it. Like, even the, the Dead Rising games, and to a point, the Fallout games, I love the fact that they actually tried to incorporate part of the original items. Right. Into the design. Yeah, I, one of the ones that stands out to me in Fallout was using a toy car to make a crossbow. Like, you use rubber bands in a toy car. Do you remember that? Yeah. And, like, you actually saw the toy car in the weapon. I love it when games do that, where they actually take the pieces that you're putting together and doing it. But but then, again, not to bring up Far Cry, I need a wallet, so I'm going to go kill four rhinoceroses. I know. <laughs> you skin them for the leather. Really? Four of them? Sure. I'm pretty sure you could make several. I mean, I don't even know if rhinoceros was the animal that you needed to use, but well, it uh, just it depends on how hard you ventilated them. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, crafting there. There's just some wild things that you can put together, and just boom, it's just right there. And it's not like it takes time. If there's any time it takes, it's just like five seconds later. We've created this perfectly working functional thing. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that one's for sure. Alyssa, why don't you take the next one? Aaron Hughes II says, um, how about the classic trope of the double jump? Nothing bothers me in games. They're all about freedom of personal expression, which Brandon Lloyd also brought this up on Discord as well. <laughs> yeah, like, who came up with the double jump? Like, where did that become a thing? Like, I don't know. Like, there, there's nothing for you to jump off of. No. It's just, <laughs> just jump off the air. <laughs> it's just that, it's that extra, oof. And and if that's the case, then <laughs> why can't you just keep doing it? I if, don't if you know. could do it once, what's stopping you from doing? It? Well, it, I mean, doing it a third time is just like, come on now, <laughs> right? Like I just Phys- physics, physics gets in the way. But I mean, but I don't it, have enough air to jump off anymore. I, I want to have see if I can get Zach to do some research because I want to find out what what was the very first game to introduce a double jump. And what was going through those developers' minds to say, let's make this a thing. It doesn't make any sense, let's just make it. It had to be like some limitation with the hardware or I want, I, I want to make the puzzles more interesting or just add a new mechanic. Like, at what point do you say, let's just do that? Because it became a staple. Yeah. The, the, the first game I remember double jumping, I can think, unless I'm not mistaken, was Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Or actually, Ghosts and Goblins did it first, right? Arthur could just jump twice in the air. There's got to be one before that, though. Well, I I actually do have uh, a little cheat sheet here with some of these things on them. Oh, okay. Look at you, Mr. Research. So the the first game that ever introduced the double jump was a game called Dragon Buster. Dragon Buster. On which how, uh, how long ago was that? 1984. So that's the NES era, right? Uh, 1985. Oh, that's right. NES was 19. So, what console was that? Uh, I believe it was. Um, God, see, like that's the problem with my list is I had the game, not the console. Oh, okay. So, I have limitations to my my abilities. <laughs> right. Uh, oh no, it's a it's a computer game. Oh, okay. So, uh, made by Namco. I want to track like, down the developer of that game and just have a conversation about the double jump. Ask like, him. Why'd you do this? I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Like, what's the thought process behind that? There's got to there's gotta be somebody, some journalist that's written an article and interviewed developers and said, talk to us about this. I want to know. I just want to know. Not because I want to, like, crap all over it or anything. I just want to know the thought process and where that came, came to be. 
because it's such a staple in so many video games nowadays. Yeah. Like it really is. Even in some first person games, you can have a double jump. It's insane. All right, CB, next one. Uh, Chip Holt. Uh, having just wrapped up Control, all of the abilities Jesse acquires jumps to mind. For me personally, I love it. I don't play video games for hyper reality since I just started Ratchet and Clank. Another one is the double jump. Again, I'm totally fine with it. Yeah. Man, if you want to talk about crazy video game abilities, Control. Like that yeah, entire she, game. <laughs> she basically becomes like one of the X-Men. Yes, she really does. The first time you get flight though, it feels amazing. Yeah. It just uh, it just feels great. And uh, that's a perfect example where I don't care about reality. I just care about what, the fun I'm having in that game. Cuz it was it was a that game would not have been as fun with with that grounded in reality. No, I'm I'm actually mm-hmm. still waiting for more information on the oldest house. Yeah? yeah. Control 2. Ah, oh, don't tempt me. But <laughs> Remedy Remedy doesn't make sequels, man. Just more in the universe. What about Max Payne 2, Max Payne eh. 3? They didn't make Max Payne 3. Alan Wake. Rockstar. Had uh, the the American Nightmare. That was a DLC. It was a standalone game. You could you could play that without the original. It was Alan a Wake. glorified DLC. Yeah, whatever. Brian Lewis <laughs> says, getting your hand chopped off and then just plop, you reattach it. <laughs> That's just too much for me. Uh, Alyssa brought that one up already. Yeah. That is a good one. Um, <laughs> though, though I do love their attempt on explaining why it happens. <laughs> right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so not going to spoil it, but it's pretty funny. It is pretty funny. They actually tried to legitimize it. Uh, over on Discord, Mark Szymanski says, I get the need for this, otherwise the games would be unbearable to play. But with healing factors better than Wolverines, I'm able to be shot several hundred times in games like Call of Duty and Uncharted. I'm not bothered by it, but I spent the entirety of the game shaking my head and laughing. We had a couple listeners that also echoed his sentiment. Carmel Bear said, I remember a friend from high school, lost touch with him, commented on how he was just going to the, he was going to join the military. His bandmate next to him said, just remember, there's no health packs on the ground or continues. I still chuckle when I remember that comment. So there's that. I'll see myself out. <laughs> and then David Newman followed up and said, The fact that you could heal yourself with snacks reminds me of the last couple of years of Snickers commercials. Quote, you're not you when you're hungry. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Even in Fallout, you can like, just buy some potato chips and eat them and you, you'll earn a Tasty little bit lads. of health. Now, there's no healing properties in food. You need it to survive, not like to get better. <laughs> do Do you remember in um, it was like, was it three or New Vegas where they had like the extreme mode, where you had to like have food? Oh, it was in water. three and four. They like you had to actually oh, keep, yeah. keep yourself fed, um, hydrated, and rested. Yeah. Otherwise, you would die. Which was I, I never even bothered. I had no I'd- desire. I did New Vegas the whole way through that Did way. you really? It becomes a chore. I, well, yeah. <laughs> Remember in uh, the, this isn't quite as extreme, but Red Dead 2, like you had to bathe yourself and shave and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I Otherwise your that. character would like start attracting flies and stuff <laughs> like that, which is crazy. Maybe Ugh, that's why I'm like, maybe but yeah, that's healing. why he wasn't so like for me. What's that? Because I don't ever remember taking a bath in that game. Well, you did. how long did you play it? I beat Red Dead 2. You did? Yeah. And you never bathed or anything? No. <laughs> Shaved or anything like that? Nope. Oh, my goodness. You had to. <laughs> he was a foul boy. I'll bet. Did anybody ever comment on it, like when you walked into town or anything? Well, I was wondering why people always like were like, get away from me. <laughs> He's now trying to start conversations with people at the saloon and like... It feels like a piece of burnt rubbery bacon. <laughs> wow, nice robot chicken reference. <laughs> Thank you. See, we, there's a pop ref- culture reference I knew. All right, Alyssa, if you can keep it together, I'll let you okay. take the next one. Paul Hines says, anything Earthworm Jim did, and don't get started on Rayman. <laughs> also, swinging from point A to point B with a whip. Awesome. Highly improbable. Oh, seriously, like the, the things that have to 
fall into place exactly perfectly for you to be able to swing from a whip. Yeah. Like, number one, to whip it and get it to wrap around. Whip it good. Whip it real good. <laughs> you must whip it. <laughs> no, but have you ever, like, have you ever, like, got a ball stuck in the tree and you try to throw a rock at it or something to get it knocked out? How many tries does it take you? Several. Yeah. Don't lie, CB. I know you're, no, like, I'm, good at everything. No, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, I'm trying to think of the physics behind some of this, like, a, a a whip, a little bit believable. Earthworm Jim using his body as a whip? <laughs> mm, not so believable. Well, Earthworm Jim was, was by design, a ridiculous game, right? Like, it was, it was yeah. supposed to be stupid. Um, But, I mean, just... Whenever you play a game with a whip, that whip attaches the first time every single time. It does. And the length of the whip is the exact amount that you need in order to be able to jump to the ledge. And also, how is it detaching itself? Are you telling me that he's he's putting that amount of pressure on it to keep it in place? Like if you if you loosen it, then it comes loose? Is he holding it that tight the entire time he's running to leap and then put his weight on it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's a practical, but I mean, like, it's cool. It's, it's probably doable. Myth, we need Mythbusters to come back to do this. Right? Oh, <laughs> could we do a whip episode? That would be amazing. But I, that actually bothered me as a kid watching the indie movies. As cool as it was, he was always able to just, like, wrap that whip around something the first. How does it, how does it stay? <laughs> Clove hitch. Really? It's just going to do that perfectly on the first have you ever try? Seen the, have you ever actually seen the people? Like, there's videos of people on the internet where they can, like, they slow-mo do it, but uh-huh. they'll throw a rope over, and just depending on how they move their wrist, they can actually get it to tie a clove hitch, like, one-handed. What's a clove hitch? You're going to have to explain. It's a, is that type, a type of, of knot? knot. Okay. Is, it, is that one that will loosen if you uh, release the it, tension? It can, yeah. All but right. it, but again, it's the um, the like the length. Like, there's a lot of factors into it. Yeah, he makes it. He makes a really good point. All right, CB. Next, uh, Nate Lucas, as Brandon Lloyd commented, Luke Kang's bicycle kick was ridiculous <laughs> and satisfying at the same time. Most of the Mortal Kombat fatalities, old and new, defy physics and or ignore actual human anatomy. I loved every second of it. And wouldn't want it any other way. And I apologize, Brandon. I missed your comment. I thought I put it in here, but apparently I, I did not copy and paste it correctly. So Brandon actually mentioned Mortal Kombat first, but Nate followed up with it. Yeah. yeah the bicycle everything kick. in that universe. <laughs> no, just everything in that universe. Yeah. I mean, you, let you, me you throw to... a, a razor rounded hat <laughs> at somebody, have it cut through them, and then return to me. And not cut you in half. You just yeah. are able to catch it. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> just oh th- you could almost do an entire episode of just like what is wrong physically with mortal, with mortal combat. combat yeah yeah uh thomas beck says joel from last of us can hear like a bat like he has a sonar in his head it works for the game but i doubt it works that way in real life i mean you could say that for pretty much any game even like um as much <laughs> i keep bringing up far cry but games where like you could tag enemies and then as soon as you tag them now you can see them through walls and you can see wherever they're walking wouldn't that be super handy in real life so <laughs> no yeah. like the sonar vision no i know but like that, that's what me, that one's last the of us. worst well huh? i know but um at last of us 2 did a little bit where like you'll see them and then duck behind something but their outline is still there right like you can still so see it's, the it's outline. like sonar vision mm-hmm. super handy yeah. Wouldn't really happen. You would not have a clue where anybody was. It it, it makes it makes it almost not fair. <laughs> like you have such an advantage because obviously the AI doesn't have that ability. They're relying on where you're shooting from and 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 line of sight. You don't need line of sight in those games, which is it's nice for us. I think someone mentioned maybe. Uh, oh, you know what? There's another one coming up that's gonna. Uh, let's go ahead and read that one. Alan Sheck. Said, I'll say one that I appreciate is instinct mode or whatever different games call it when your enemies and points of interest get highlighted. Um, it feels more realistic to play without it, 
but in general I find it bridges the gap in experience between myself and the protagonist, so the game flows like it would if I was actually an assassin. So, a game that allows you to turn it on or off, I'm playing with it on, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I, <laughs> any advantage I can have, because I consider myself not that great at video games, so I'm always putting that on as long as there's not an achievement attached to it. Yeah. Uh, CB, you're up. Uh, Ferris, how about games with no fall damage? <laughs> or perhaps the games that have bodies of water, but you can't swim, you only drown. Like Grand Theft Auto? Got, yeah, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> uh, I, can, I can be okay with no fall damage, but I as a grumpy on games with uh, bodies of water that you can't do anything with. See, I would feel the other way. No fall damage yeah. I take a bigger issue with than, than drowning, because some people legitimately don't know how to swim. That's true, yeah. No one's going to survive a fall from a very high distance. True, but but I mean, he, like, games that you can't even interact with the water. I mean, that's just a limitation of hardware, right? Like, that's like what... But but to Alan's point, why have the bodies of water in there, then? It's not like anybody's like, man, you know what, this game... I really wish this had unusable bodies of water in it. Yeah. Just just make well, a city. Oh, the, like, the ones, though, that have, like, the... The, the the invisible wall effect. Oh, I hate that so, so much. So as soon as you oh, yeah. get to the edge of the water, it's just like, done. Can't move no further. No, the ones that crack me up are like when you're in a game and, and you can't get through a door that's clearly dilapidated and there's just like a bar across it with a huge gap in there, but I can't, like, because the door is broken, I can't go through the door. The The twig issue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, oh, look at this path that's clearly marked. There is a twig. <laughs> that's like, like an old like, log, Game Boy, Game Boy thing, right? Oh, no. Like this, they still do it to this day. Do they really? Yeah. And I'm like, bro, it's a twig. I can step over it. I can, I can pick it up and snap it in half. <laughs> but you won't let me go through it. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Just, just impassable walls. I mean, again, I understand that hardware limitations are a real thing, but sometimes I'm like, couldn't there have been a better way to get around that? Just, I don't know. Just don't put the path there. Yeah, they're, they're just, or put something big in the way that I really can't get past. It drives me crazy in games when I see something that I can clearly just step over or walk around. Well, like a path, like uh, like the little small path. Just put a bush there. Like yeah, it's, I, I it's not go around a bush very easily. No, but what I'm saying is like rather than it's put a bush? path that I can see, just put a like a big tall bush. Key the forest. Yeah. Tree hugger. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alyssa, you're up. Silly Willie says grenade explosions in games are microscopic compared to the real thing. Also, climbing towers to reveal more of the map as if the map you have is incomplete when you got it, because that's how maps work, right? I mean... You gotta explore. Write the map. I, if, you're writing, if you're writing the map, yes. But... <laughs> so is the idea that someone's climbing the tower and then sitting up there and, and just, like, drawing the map <laughs> while they're sitting at the sure. top of the tower? Yeah. Oh, no, the, the worst is when so somebody's like, oh, and here is your map. And, like, half the map is, like, not there. You have to discover it. Right. And then it just appears magically. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, see, I would, I, want a, I want a realistic version of that, where, like, the dude's just sitting there, like, scribbling with crayon really quick. Just like, yeah, I'm drawing it, man. That would actually be kind of fun. Because they do that with, like, the markings, right? Someone will be like, oh, I'm drawing on the map in the circle, and I wrote a little note here. But nobody ever actually draws the map that's, like, really bad at art. All of a sudden, everybody that's making this map is, like, a really good at shading and <laughs> can do God. everything. Can you imagine if somebody made a game where you, like, reversed all these tropes? Like, you have to, like, quickly scribble the map. Or uh -huh. instead of double jumping, like, the guy tries to, like, do it and fails miserably. <laughs> <laughs> huh. That would be, it'd be more of a joke kind of thing, but I can see that being a thing. Well, that was some good responses. That's what our community thought. Uh, what about you two? Did the listeners miss any that you would uh, that you wanted to bring up as well? Oh, I have a few. You have a few. All right, go ahead, CB. I have a few. Uh, my personal favorite is um, 
um uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it, but uh for any type of po- like ability system. It's like, like skill mm, I I like not even skill tree, uh like the special system. Okay. And follow me like, mm, I leveled up. Let me just put a point in strength and instantly I'm stronger. <laughs> right. So, or just like instant knowledge of weapons. Be like, Wouldn't yep, it be skill nice tree. If it worked that way in real life, I know. Oh my Kung god! Fu. Yeah, the 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 Matrix effect. Just download. It's all uh, ones I, and zeros, man. Yep. Uh, I hate uh, dimensional storage. Dimensional, like where you have to fit things look into. At, like look Resident at me Evil? with these eighteen rifles in my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what game was the worst at that was Wolfenstein. Remember uh, the Fallout, the remake Wolfenstein. Fallout is the worst. Oh, Fallout, yeah. Because what's what's the limit? Like you you start with like two hundred and fifty kilograms that you can carry. It depends on your strength, right? But then like you can get a perk that like adds an extra fifty to that. So I'm I'm carrying three hundred kilos of stuff and fighting. Like yeah. Well, what's funny is because uh, the early Fallout stuff didn't. Um take into effect like the weight of bullets oh yeah and like, for, ammo weighs those, nothing in those games for for those of us that shoot on a regular basis bullets are heavy they're very heavy they're a lot heavier than you think mm-hmm. but ammo weighs and, nothing in fallout but fallout fallout to me was like the most egregious because you're like look at me i'm gonna sit here and carry a thousand rounds of 10 millimeter and another 300 rounds of 50 cal right. and i'm like Bro, like I don't think you know how heavy that is. <laughs> That's really good. What's like, funny I've is like it. a bag of chips weighs half a pound, but but a bullet weighs nothing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good one. Did you have another one? Um music manipulation, just being able to instantly change the music in the background. Can you imagine you're just walking down the street, just be like, sound. And I'm like, oh, I guess that really does kind of exist. I was going to say, it does kind of exist, man. We got, like, Alexa yeah. is a real thing. So, um, I have one other one that I want to throw on before we move out. All right. The automatic ability to know languages. Okay, it's okay in D&D, but not in, not in video well, games? Well, no, no, just, like, you run into some rant, like, you're in a fantasy world. Uh-huh. And how many times you walk around and see just a different species, and you're like, "Hey, look, we can talk." You know, that's no a really problem good point. in translation. Yeah, it is. Like I, 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 in Metroid, I came across a, a new species of of uh, beings that is spe- literally speaking. There's actual voice, and it's in a foreign language, but the subtitles are in English, and Samus understands this creature speaking for some reason. That happens a lot in games. You never yeah, have the conversation in games of like, me, Scott, you, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, that never happens in games. Just everyone just speaks everything. I am Groot. <laughs> I, am, I am Steve Rogers. <laughs> sure, bro. I mean, he was in the middle of battle. Come on, give him. He had never met him before. That Dude, that line still cracks me up to this day. Oh, it's funny. It's funny. Alyssa, did you have any? I think you all mentioned everything that came to my mind. Okay. The only other one, I don't even know if this really is a mechanic, it's more of just a thing in a game that just doesn't make any sense, is um, barrels of explosive liquid just being everywhere. Oh, yeah. And guys Dude, hiding behind exist. them. <laughs> those exist <laughs> in certain areas of the world, man. They do, but not to the frequency that they appear in video yeah. games. And true, or the fact what, that they're always red, they're always red. And what dumbass is hiding behind them <laughs> when they're being shot at? I like just, I've never, like, that's a, such a video game thing. And I know that's not really a mechanic, it, it, but, but it just it does not make sense. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, this kind of goes along with the, with the whip thing, but grappling hooks, like, I've got, I've got a better one for you than grappling hooks. No, no, no. Something that you, I guarantee you, you wish this exists in real life. Okay. Whatever you have to make a decision, three options appear. Oh, Good, yeah. bad, <laughs> neutral. Oh, yeah. I mean, you- That'd be really helpful. You kind of, you kind of know, right? 
but but no, but the fact that you can sit here and be like infinitely delay going forward until you pick one of said options. Oh yeah, you got as much time as like you want. Like with a really hard decision where you don't know which one's the correct answer. Honey, and do it these comes pants? Up. Do these Go. pants make my butt look fat? Good <laughs> answer, bad answer, neutral answer. Infinite wait time. <laughs> That's another thing is when those when those uh, talking trees come up, the person always waits forever long it takes to. <laughs> That's when you get up and go do something you need to do. And then you yeah. come back and they're just still staring at each other like. I know nobody, everybody listening to this can't see the look on my face. But I'm just like, huh? Are you gonna talk to it or are we gonna? Are we gonna Can you just imagine like. Today? Like the oh god! Like it makes me want to have like some of those sections come up in like the movie Free Guy. I still haven't where seen it. Just like God, you need to see that movie just because then like you'd be like, hey man, I'm just waiting for the player to come back. You guys want to sit here and just jam out for a bit? Like what's going on? Wouldn't you like? What do you think they're doing? Wouldn't you trip out if it was like a Toy Story type situation where these characters <laughs> oh, yeah. are like actual like real beings and they're just like having a conversation, and then they don't realize you're coming back and you just come back and they're talking. Yeah, I want a game to do that. <laughs> I want it to be like a hidden thing that no, they never advertise, they never do it, and if you leave it sit for a little while, then they just start talking to one another. Like that uh, would be a trip. Microsoft tried that with the original Xbox home screen. Did they? If you let that thing sit long enough, it starts talking. Really? Yeah. Okay. People probably thought their consoles were haunted. <laughs> <laughs> That was a fun topic, guys. I really enjoyed that. And thank you to all the listeners for for writing in. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. We are going to uh, stay tuned on social media for next week's topic. We have not decided it yet, but uh, I'm going to try this week. Uh, don't quote me on it. I, maybe I shouldn't have said this on the on the podcast, but I'm going to try to put the question. I'm going to film myself asking the question with some fun. I'm trying to learn TikTok a little bit. Oh. I've been... I've been push a button and you record a video. No, but I'm trying to, but I'm not I'm not clever, man. Is the thing. It's like coming up with something I'm not I'm not clever. Are we going to get are we going to get spicy TikTok, Scott Clark? <laughs> spicy TikTok? What are you talking about? Majority of the videos that are on TikTok, what do you think of? I think of anime. I, I think <laughs> That's of, what pops I think up of mine. Funny <laughs> cats and dogs. Sc- scantily clad people doing things. So I'm oh, like no. spicy Scott Clark. <laughs> What TikTok are you watching? What, what what's causing That's your not al- my TikTok? <laughs> what's causing your algorithm <laughs> to look like that? I fell down the pirate TikTok hole for a while. Uh huh. Uh huh. Dude, it's it's a fun time. The capital P. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna start trying to uh, utilize that social media platform a little bit more and uh, hopefully attract more attention. Um. So I'm gonna try to mess around with that and learn a little bit because I know you can like put videos and stuff behind you or images behind you, and I just gotta figure. Yeah, out there's how to... a green screen filter. On is there it. a green screen filter? Mm-hmm. I just learned. <laughs> this is how old I am, Alyssa. I I've only been using TikTok to like watch because I I it's addicting. Oh, me too. I just I just watch it, and then I realize it has a little circle in the bottom right hand corner that lets you like take the audio from somebody else's and put it over your own video. I just I just learned how to do that. I didn't realize it was that easy. It's yeah. stupid easy to do, so I got to play with the filters and figure out how to do that because I think it would make it a lot of fun to just, you know, film a little 45-second thing and ask the question and see if I get any responses and maybe get some new listeners. That would be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that question. If you guys have any ideas, um, let us know. But that is going to do it for this episode of The Gaming Outsider. Thanks so much, everybody, for listening, and thanks to CB and Alyssa for joining us. It was awesome. This is a fun episode with the three of us should do this more often. Yeah, I'm down. We should. I miss I miss Zach, but uh, we should we should do this once in a while. Uh CB, do you have any parting words before we get out of here? Uh I I may I may cross over and stomp on Alyssa's here a little bit, but watch Squid Game. I th- oh yeah. I thought she talked about that on a, on the episode with just her and Zach, didn't you? Uh I hadn't watched it at that point. Oh no. I, I just know because she was talking about it on Facebook. Oh, what was the show yeah, you recommended? The show you recommended on Netflix when you were, when you and Zach were doing it? something about a reality show or something like that. I believe it was called it was Clickbait. Clickbait. Okay, I thought that's what what that's what this was, but I started watching Squid Game as well. Um, but Squid Game. I just finished it. Really today. good uh, piece of television. Yeah, I liked it. 
Um, and I actually just started another one called Midnight Mass. That one's good too. So I that one that one hooked me real quick. I am so it is so hard. There's so many good shows I want to watch. It's it's crazy that I want to watch shows more than I want to watch movies. Like I used to be just the other way around. Now there's just so many TV shows I want to watch. But yeah, I'm only one episode into Squid Game, but it's it definitely has a great hook right from the beginning. Oh, just wait. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Oh, Alyssa, what about you? Anything you'd like to recommend to everybody else? I just watched a movie called Blue Bayou Saturday as of recording, and it blew me away. It's on demand right now and in select theaters, but I'd say watch it on demand. Beautiful movie. It is very, very tough to watch at points, and it's very emotional. It's about a man who is adopted, and he's only lived in America since... He was three years old, and then he gets in a fight, and they decide to deport him because his adoptive parents didn't file the correct paperwork. So it's him trying to stay with his wife, and she's heavily pregnant, and he doesn't want to be deported to Korea, where he's not going to be able to be with his family anymore, and it's just their story of trying to get him to be able to stay in America. Nice. Sounds kind of sad. <laughs> it is, but it's got Alicia Vikander in it, which I love her. Ooh, and yeah. Justin Sean is the star, director, and writer, and he did a phenomenal job. And he was actually in the Twilight series as one of the friends before he did this movie. Ah, okay. He looks completely different now. Very cool. I got a weird recommendation for you guys. Um, I do a lot of cooking, and uh, I was using an app to keep track of all my recipes and the app just disappeared one day and their website said Ooh. that they were done. Uh, so all of these recipes that I had saved are gone. Um, so I needed to find another app and I found an app and I, I swear I'm not getting paid to, to pimp this, this app, but there's an app called tasty that allows you to create your own recipes and use other, look up other recipes. But the really cool thing about this is if you like to cook like I do, um, I hate grocery shopping. I just, I hate like making lists and everything. And my wife and I use Walmart. We like order everything and then go pick up the groceries at the end of the week. Tasty, when you um, make it, when you pick a meal that you want, it actually takes the entire list of ingredients that you need and you check which ones that you don't have and it automatically adds it to your Walmart shopping cart so that when you go buy groceries at the end of the week, you just have everything that you need. I just thought that was just such a brilliant move it makes uh planning your meals a lot easier and um and then you get to try a bunch of new stuff which is which is cool we tried a new meal tonight which was like a chicken and rice casserole um it was shockingly good my wife gave it five stars so tasty is the name of the app again she just randomly found it and we just decided to try it and this is the first meal we did highly recommend it so there you have it well thank you guys it was a lot of fun chatting with you, and thank you, dear listeners, for checking out The Gaming Asset. I want to remind you that the show is produced by Nate Lucas, and all the music you hear is written and performed by Grant Henry of Stemage and Metroid Metal. By the way, speaking of Grant Henry, uh, CB, I don't know if I told you this, but at the end of the month, on December, the weekend of the 30th, the 30th is Extra Life, but the Friday before, I'm going to the Pinball Expo in Schaumburg. And part of the reason that I wanted to go to the Pinball Expo outside of obvious reasons, is there's a guy in New York that's making a Metroid table that he's homebrewing. He obviously can't mass produce it or sell it because it's a Nintendo property. Um, but I was like, I, I have to play it. I want to see this Metroid table. And he had a link on Twitch this weekend where he's like, hey, come check it out. And he showed him messing with the table. And he had his Twitch connected to the LCD screen on his pinball machine so that whenever mm -hmm. you typed him a message, it would pop up on the LCD screen, and um, then he would interact with you and, and respond back to you with whatever you typed. So I'm watching him like play around this table, and all of a sudden, on the back of the board, the word stemmage comes across. And I oh, was geez. like, get out of town. I, I, so I messaged him. I said, I just saw the word stemmage pop up across the screen. I'm close friends with Grant. Is he doing the music for your table? And he's like, oh, yeah, he's the guy behind Metroid Metal, and we're using his music, and his wife is doing the voice, the, the female voice, like for Sam, I believe for oh, Sam. Oh, dude, that's awesome. So, that's so cool. Now, granted, it's not like a mass-produced thing, but like, 
what a small freaking world. Like, I was going to this thing anyway. Grant knows everybody. Grant truly is a rock star. Um, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, literally. He's in books. <laughs> He's so, in books. <laughs> uh, if we get R2-V2 up and running, we need to get him out here to come play some stuff because he's just a legitimately cool guy. But uh, please check out his music, stemmagemusic.com. I really do appreciate everything that he's done for us, and he is just an absolute awesome guy. Also, be sure to email us if you have any questions or concerns. Our address is feedback at thegamingoutsider.com. Until next week, I'm Scott Clark with Chris Berensmeyer and Alyssa White, and we are The Gaming Outsider. And remember, there's no such thing as a bad game, just games that aren't for you. We'll be right back.